Hello folks and welcome to another helping of Mr H's Art Pot. Today we're back at Hare Woodland Park which is in Wigan, traditionally Lancashire. It was in Lancashire, Wigan, up until 1974 when they restructured all the boundaries. And like many other Wiganers, I'll never accept that we're now part of Greater Manchester. Anyway, this 250 acre woodland that's behind me and the all that lays within it was originally the home of the Earl of Balcarris stroke Earl of Crawford, depending which name you want to know him by. It was owned by the Lindsay family right up until 1947, when the family sold it to then Wigan Corporation for £18,000. Wigan Corporation later became Wigan Council, which we all know it by today. Now, back in the 70s and early 80s, a number of attractions was added to this park by Wigan Corporation slash Wigan Council in a bid to bring the public through the gates to visit it because one of the conditions of the sale of the all and the woodlands was that the people of Wigan would be able to enjoy it forevermore which is what we're actually doing today. Now some of those attractions are still here surprisingly enough today and still in operation but one or two of them have fallen by the wayside down the years and are now lost attractions. So what I'm going to do Hot Potters in this little series of videos is take a look at each one of those attractions individually, take a closer look and talk about some of the history of it. So why not join me as we turn back the pages of time and step back through history to when this woodland park was known as Hay Country Park, which is the name that I and many other Wiganers will recognise. So without further ado, let's take a look at one of those attractions now, shall we? Folks, well, before I kick off today's uh, little video and having a look at one of the original attractions here at Hare Woodland Park, I'm going to give a shout out to one of my subscribers, a fellow by the name of Dave508D. Hello to you, sir. You saw us in Morrison's the other day, me, Mrs. H, and little Toby, having a break in. You came over and said hello. It's always nice when you're out and about and one of your subscribers come over and says they follow your videos, etc. So a big hello to you, sir. Secondly, I'm going to dispense, for now at least, with this art because it's rather warm here in uh, Hare Woodland Park today. It's a glorious day, isn't it, Mrs. H? It is now. So the attraction that we're going to come and have a look at today is an original attraction from when this was Hare Country Park and I'm at the miniature railway, the 15-inch gauge miniature railway. There's actually two railways here at Hare Country Park. One of them is the one that we're at. The other one is like a light gauge railway, which we'll take a look at in another video. Now, I'm currently sat at one of the stations. There's two stations to this uh, little attraction. One's called Hay Hall North, the other's called Hay Hall South. But since the days of Hay Country Park, this one's been ominously renamed simply Hay Hall. So whether the other station, they've done a Dr. Beeching on it, Mrs. H, and they've axed it, <laughs> We don't know. We will find out, however, because we're going to walk the complete circular of this uh, narrow gauge railway. Now, it's not running today. It only runs at weekends, bank holidays and school holidays. So we're pretty safe from any trains coming up behind us and running us over. So, without further ado, let's take a little look around this station, first of all, because there's one or two little features on here. And uh, we'll make our way around the track. I don't know if this particular station was called North or South. Maybe one of you guys out there who rode this railway can point that out in the comments below. But let's take a look now at some of the features on this station. So the first feature that we're going to have a look at on this station is the water tower. So, as you can see, it's just sort of a tank on a pole. Now, probably, originally, when they opened this railway, this was used to fill. Because it looks like there's a valve on here, Mrs H. And, yeah, yeah, there is an iron tank in there, so it's not just a mock. But I don't think it's used today. I can remember way back when, when all that was brand new paint, you know, back in the 80s. This uh, railway opened in 1986. It had many operators throughout its time, but um, back in the day, you know, it was seen as the gem and the main attraction here at Aeol, which is just up there in the distance, not far away from Aeol. So the next little feature we're going to have a look at is one of those original Hay Country Park signs. If you do recall from the last video that I did, I mentioned that there's still a number of these signs that have managed to escape the rebranding. This is one. Now, from my research, 
Apparently it used to cost a pound to go all the way around on this railway. And I should imagine though, that's where it used to say a pound. I think it went up to 150 and obviously they've painted it out so it costs more these days. So the second of those original Hay Country Park signs is here. And if you want to see it yourself, when you're on the train, should you come and have a little ride on it, you'll find it just as you leave the station that we've been stood on, which I think is Aol North. There's two stations, like I say, Aol North and Aol South. Aol South, I think, is over near the Walled Gardens. Hopefully we'll see that as we make our way around this mile track. Now, just before you get to the station's sheds, that's where you'll see this sign. The reason I think these signs have uh, managed to escape the rebranding here at Hay Woodland Park is a different operator runs the miniature railway as opposed to one running it all like they used to do back in the days with Wigan Council. The fellow who runs it today is a guy by the name of uh, Derek Moss and he upgraded it, you know, he's uh, got it back online thankfully. It closed slightly in 2012, we'd stopped coming in the, here by then Mrs H so I didn't know it was uh, not running. I thought mm -hmm. it had carried on running all the way through from 1986 but uh, so apparently not it's had a break between 2012 and 2014 it officially reopened on the 20th of april 2014 although it had been doing soft openings since july 2013 probably then if it didn't work or it broke down you couldn't ask for your money back anyway without further ado we're going to make our way now to the sheds where the engines live there's two resident uh, engines on this railway, Helen and Rachel, so we'll take a little look now where they live when they're not in use. Now as you approach the engine sheds, which you can just see through there in the background, you'll come to a set of points, and obviously I think the engine driver has to get out and manually change them, you know, it's not one of these light railways where there's electric points, you have to get out and physically do it. So and this is how you do it. It's as simple as that. And off you go into the engine sheds, because I've just changed the points for all that. But you get out and you change it over. And away to go, off where we're going to go now. So we'll take a look at the sheds and then we're going to make our way around. I'm not going to film every little detail and every sleeper because this film will go on forever. And some of it just goes through the woodland, which is pretty nice when you're on the train, especially on a hot day like this, you get a nice cool breeze. But uh, it's made for very boring footage, so I'm just going to do snippets of certain areas. The first place we're going to have a look at, like I said, is those engine sheds, which are locked up today. So here we are. This is where they're sleeping at present, Mrs H. <laughs> wonder which side which is on. Yeah, which is Alan and which is Rachel. There's also, I think, two other engines in there that have been on loan from Cleethorpe's Light Railway. And they're on like a long-term loan project. They're being restored. We really missed out the other day because um, when we did a recce the other day for the uh, zoo video, which if you haven't seen, I'll put a link up now for you, we uh, missed out because the engines were here and they was actually doing some work on them, wasn't there, Mrs H? Yeah. Um, but we didn't have our cameras with us, so it's one of those, an opportunity missed. If you want to see these in action, why not come down this weekend and you'll see them between 11am and 4pm, apparently. Now, there's lots of stuff here in the... Uh, in the sardines here type of thing. As you would find at any railway really. I don't know what that tub's been, whether it's been a coach at one time or not. I don't know. So we'll take a closer look at this uh, tub, Mrs H, because there's a bit of writing on the side here. Dynant, Fac, Anthrocity. Now apparently Mrs H has had a little look on Google and uh, what was it that come up? Dynant, Fact is the name of the colliery, is it? Yeah, in Wales. Which you can buy for 10 grand, it's up for sale, I believe. <laughs> Part of it, I suppose. <laughs> and uh, what did you say the anthracity is? I'm sorry if we're not pronouncing these words correctly. It's a type of coal that's very hard and it's smokeless. Yeah, so that must be like. O o Cannell was a very peculiar coal to this area. That must have been the same over there. I've never heard of that. And it's grey in colour because you can buy things that are in that colour. Right. Yeah. So you learn all kinds of we things. We thought it was German at first, didn't we? Was it well, the word fac looks very. Uh, very Germanic. There's a bit of a sign in here, I don't know if this has come from with this tub or indeed what this tub's doing here but no, it uh, looks like it's been a signal that It does, there's a bit of writing on the bottom but you can't You just can't make it out, can you? can't make it out there, it's underneath all that all that paint. They've obviously repurposed the sign so probably this was up elsewhere maybe here 
for rain day all and uh, they've repurposed it at one point. Mm. Nowadays it's just uh, thrown in here. It looks like that's the undercarriage to it though, Mrs. Hurts, you know, that would have been attached to it. Where the wheels are, who knows? Might have reused them for something else. Well, they may have done, they may be on a, one of the other carriages. You've got that Diane fat on there again and then the word rocket fuel, which probably tells you it was good coal. Yeah. Sadly, it's just laid abandoned here at the side of this little shed, along with a, a cable drum though, and some railway sleepers. I should imagine these bits of handline here that are attached to these chunks of concrete would have been what that sound was hung on. Mm, maybe. Yeah, this is the sardines area. Whether or not that tub will ever see life or not, again, I don't know. It probably has come from that colliery. If so, it'd have been nice to see it restored and uh, used again. It's all done this by volunteers, I believe. The fella who did get this back on on track, pardon the pun, uh, Derek Morse, from, he was from Ackley Bridge. And, uh, you know, fair play to him. He got together with the friends of AOL and Wigan Council to get it back up because he's a lover of trains and he's done a good job really getting it back on because it, it would have just been lost. He was sorry to see the state it was in. I mean these sheds have been here since this was built in 86. Oh, Shedders got windows so you can't have a peek in. You can't but there's, there's like two iron plates on here which I don't think have ever been windows. I don't think this has ever had windows in it to be honest. And what you'll see on it is one of the people who originally built this, Stan the Man, 1985. And hey all shunters world to us. Now whether or not that was the name of the original operators or not, I don't know. Like I said, I thought that this was just run by Wigan Council at one time, but uh, it's had a number of operators down the years. It was the signature attraction by all accounts. I never rode it personally. So I don't know, and I don't think you've ever been on it, have you, Mrs. Hurt? I don't know. I never remember. I'm sure, I'm sure you We'll would. be on it, though, at some point with Toby. Yeah, yeah, we will. Now, the original engine that run on here was named Katie. And uh, you can still see that engine today, because it's at Kirk Lee's Lake Railway, huh? which is over in Yorkshire. So for anybody there who's a train enthusiast, that's where you'll see it. We started off laugh at Dudley Zoo, apparently. Built in 1954. It's a long life. Yeah, it's had a long life and it's still going today. I don't think Wigan Council bought it, they just obviously got it on loan to get the thing up and running. But here we are now. We'd be off on our journey. Heading up this 15 inch gauge track. Now I often wonder if these people who run them were engine drivers themselves back in the day. I mean obviously steam hasn't been going on UK railways for many many years it's all diesel and electric now but I should imagine in the day the old the old crews would have ended up on something like this and it just meanders all the way through the woods I think the other one the narrow gauge one is sort of set within this one so they utilised all space we're following the course now but it's not the original course from way back when some parts of it are original from when it opened in 86, but others they've sort of rerouted it, probably because trees etc have got in the way. Now something that we've noticed as you're walking around these train tracks is a number of signs like this with a little engine on them. And sometimes they'll say the word whistle underneath them as well, this one hasn't got it on. Now those haven't been just placed though, you know, because it's, uh, it looks cutesy. They actually are warning signs because what I'm stood on now would have been an original path making the way through the woods. It's rather overgrown now. Mrs. Hurts will just turn around and show you though. I don't think you get through it now. You probably can't, Mrs. Hurts. And it's law that they have to put these signs here to warn, you know, people that there is a approaching train track. I mean, when you hear this little train chugging along, you can hear all these people out laughing and joking, you can hear it blowing you know, it's whistling, letting off steam. You don't say, oh, I wonder what that is. You know, it must be a bread van or something like that. You know it's a train, but 
the law states that there has to be signs. So that's the reason that they're all dotted around. I think they've had to drop the speed limit in here as well because it crosses the road. You'll see as we come round, Contessa put a new road in so that they could make their way up to the hall, which is now an hotel. And, um, you know, there's a speed limit there to stop people whizzing all the way up and crashing into a train. Right, we'll carry on. We'll make our way along the line. Fortunately, we can't move as fast as a train, can we? No. I don't know what the top speed is on the engines, but... You've got to watch your footing as well, it's all there. Uh... Very true, <laughs> very true. Bumpy. Now, a number of these attractions that we're going to take a look at in this series of videos was brought here, or the theme was expanded on if it was already here, by a fella named Gil Swift, who at the time was the Director of Leisure for Wigan Council. And at that time, during East Tenetshire, there was only a all really to concentrate on the Wigan Pier experience, only opened up towards the end when he retired in 1991. He started in 1973, so he had a long career with Wigan Council, and he was a bit of a flamboyant character, you know, he used to have the little bow ties, and from Yorkshire originally, Mrs H. Ah, good chat uh, then. South Yorkshire. He passed away in 2003, but at least he uh, managed to enjoy some of his retirement. He was a bit of a Marmark character, some loved him, others loathed him. One of the main critics that was levelled against him was that he was sort of spending public money on self-indulgent vanity projects, you know, instead of spending it on the hall and that. What I will say is, if it wasn't for him, a lot of these attractions that we're looking at today probably wouldn't exist. So, that's just a bit of an history regarding the man that presided over all these attractions. He had enough foresight to see that you couldn't just make a park and expect people to keep coming to it and seeing the same old things. He had to add new attractions. I mean, there's no way can you say it's Alton Towers, it was never going to be that, but fair play to him for bringing these things here. It's got enough to do for a couple of days, hasn't it? In here? It has, but one of the problems was that you had to pay for each attraction, as I've said in the other video, separately which, if you had a large family, and remember it was the 80s when people were sadly being knocked out of work, you would, uh, you would end up costing you quite a bit. Ah, it looks like we're coming to hear all south here, Mrs H. It does. And there's another one of those original signs there. They keep popping up. You can never erase the past. <laughs> yeah, this is the main station. The walled gardens, which are known as walker gardens, as you can see from that sign, I don't know if you can see it from here. i got a bit closer. They're just behind you, so we're, we're in the park itself now. But it looks like this has been mothballed a bit. The sign's been taken down though. And there's no benches here. No, I don't think this is a station anymore. No, it's, they've done a Dr. Beeching on it and axed it, Mrs. H. Which is a shame. I sort of thought that when we was up there and it was just simply renamed Hey All. I do remember the name North being on it now, now I come to think. But this would have been filled with passengers at one time, Mrs. H. Waiting to get on. Or oh, waiting to get on and uh, take the train ride, either do the loop or get off at the other station. I wonder if you only had to pay half a fur with you. I don't ever remember this being a station. Do you not? No. Well, it was, because obviously it was a platform. Oh, yeah, I'm not denying it. I'm just saying I don't remember it. No. Do you know when it stopped being? I don't, unfortunately. That's not been mentioned in some of the history of the place. I mean, I get a lot of my research from online, and I try and fill in some of the blanks myself. Sometimes you get it wrong. One thing I'll guarantee you, Mrs H, there'll always be somebody to leave a comment below and, and tell you if you're right or if you're wrong. So maybe somebody can tell us when this stopped being a station. It'd be nice to see it a station again, wouldn't it? It would. Well, should we continue from, uh, yeah. from this ghost station as it is now? <laughs> now, as we've been making our way along, we've come to a stretch that's been replaced recently with new sleepers. And as you can see, this is how they construct it, you know, obviously. Obviously there's a bed of hardcore underneath there that will be able to take the weight of passengers and the train itself. And then they've overlaid it with gravel. 
be sweating because it's only narrow gauge. They've just put pea gravel down, you know, and they've uh, they've laid the tracks on top of that. But that just gives you an idea of how this is constructed and what it would have looked like, really, on opening day, back in 1986. Well, probably halfway around now. I don't think A all north and A all south are exactly halfway around. Like you said, it, it hardly seems worth it getting on the train just to get off the. But if you went round the park, yeah, rather right, than following been, the track, there would have been original, original um, pathways that have since been lost. Yeah, it's amazing that this one's managed to survive, and it's a success story. Not just for Derek Moss, who was the main, the main guy in getting it brought back. It was a bit of a success for friends of all as well. They did have a couple of success stories in bringing back one or two of the original attractions here. As we said, there's some that are simply lost and uh, they'll never come back, such as the zoo. This is where they cross. Ah. Not cross, where they pass each other. Yeah. I mean, I wonder if they ever had both trains running at the same time. You know, actually operated it like you would a railway. It is large enough to take that. You could wave at one another at this point, like, like <laughs> they do in most parks. There was a big thing in um, in parks such as Aeol and places like that. And like I said, Dudley Zoo had a miniature railway. It's the uh, British fascination with trains, I think, Mrs. H. Yeah. <laughs> Not like Italy where no one wants to be a train driver. Now what he did is he was slowly restoring this line and probably why he didn't officially open it until 2014. He was doing it a little bit at a time. Until finally they got all, all of it open again. Well, there's history even here, like I said, with the engines that are running, they've all come from other, other light railways. Another little Gil Swift story, supposedly, was that when he, he retired in 1991, he commissioned a new train for this railway, but it was only due to arrive after he'd left. So what he did as a two fingers to all the people who'd been running him down over the years, he actually named it Giltsway, <laughs> so when they, they brought it here, his name was still here. I don't think there's any truth in it, but I think it's a better story than, and a more light-hearted story than the one in the zoo, <laughs> you know, regarding the deer. So, Mrs H, I think we're now approaching that road that Contessa built, because there's a sign here telling the train driver that he needs to sound the whistle of his engine as, that he's approaching. Obviously, as uh, he's approaching, he'll be able to move a lot faster than we are on foot. So that's why it's set so far back. But just round this bend here, we should be coming to that road. So we'll continue now and make our way towards it. As you can see, this is the new road here. And the train continues beyond that. Just over there, that fence there, that's the light gauge railway that we'll take a look at in another video. I actually remember that one being abandoned, Mrs H. Yeah. I won't go into it too much, because like I said, that's for another video, but... They're quite good, some of these attractions, for the day when they were brought here. You know, but... Like I said, it's fair play to Wigan Council for investing in it. And trying to, at the time, get visitors to come into the park. I mean, there was a little playground and, and other attractions. So they did spend quite a bit of money back in the day, probably at the detriment to the hall itself, you know, because it's a Grade 2 listed building, it needs a lot of money spending on it. It does. And when all said and done, not everyone that was coming to a hall, Country Park, wanted to live in the past. You know, some of them just wanted to come up and and enjoy the park as it stands, you know, today. So they, did, they wanted to just live in the moment and I suppose Gil Swift, thinking that way, realised not everybody wanted to go on some National Trust type of thing. Yeah, we're making our way around the, 
the final approach really now, aren't we? I think just across there, this is it, across this field is where we did that film from those kennels that time. Oh yeah. Again, if oh, you a while ago. Again, if you haven't seen that film, I'll put a link up now for you. A little bit of shameless promoting there of my films. I've done quite a few films. Round about here all on that, haven't we now? Yeah. Yeah, there's the main passage you can see that fellow on the bike though. So we're now approaching the station again. And I don't know how many passengers those engines can pull at any one time. I think they can pull three carriages, I don't know how many seats are in them. Again, if anyone knows, leave a comment below. Nearly back at the station. Yeah, nearly back. Oh, they've done a proper job on this one, haven't they? Yeah, but there's no sign to say whistle. Yeah, it's the... there's, there's one just over there. Not surprised me, I thought as we'd come to the end of it though. <laughs> How many, how many children will have way from these tracks to people <laughs> walking along? <clears throat> I mean, from what one or two people have said on other videos that I've done, there used to be like a traction engine that run from up at the arm, in the oh, stables, yeah. all the way down to the plantation gates at the bottom, and used to bring people up and down. I don't remember it, but again, it was an attraction that was uh, that was on. Obviously for a small nominal charge you could ride up in comfort. And here we are, we're pulling back in at the station here. And here we be, all change. <laughs> yeah, the white line on this one is obviously you would have on a platform that's no you can't even see where that's been on the old one can you no the other station so it is a long time since that was used sadly maybe it was before health and safety oh probably probably i can't really see people getting pulled under a little train like that now as we've been making our way up and down this little platform here i found one of the old tickets it's for a child unfortunately it doesn't tell us how much it costs for a train journey. That would have confirmed it, wouldn't it, Mrs H? It would. Or at least would have carbon dated this to roughly when it had been dropped. Originally, I think it was bright pink, because you can see some of the ink on it there. I don't know if the camera's picking that up or not. Oh, they're copying that much. Well, they was printed by Leicester Press, and it's an 01942 number, so they've been printed locally. I don't know who Leicester Press is. I've never heard of them. Well, this one's ticket number... Uh, what is it that? 26426. So, whether they started them really at zero, 00 or not, who knows. A little bit of history though, I think you've seen one as you've been walking around, haven't yeah. you? Yeah. So that's how you could win all those bright pink. Yeah, a little bit of history, a little bit of a, a ticket there. Whether or not that's from recent or way back when, who knows. Well folks, we're back where we started. Uh, hope you enjoyed this little walk around, this original attraction here at what was once known as Air Country Park. I think we'll wrap this video up Mrs H now and uh, we'll get off. Well folks, that unfortunately brings us to the end of this particular video. Hopefully you enjoyed it, and a little walk back through the mists of time to when Air Woodland Park was Air Country Park, and a look at that particular attraction. Maybe you visited it back in the day, or maybe you even worked at it. If so, why not leave your comments below as I'd love to hear your thoughts. Anyway, we're going to get off now, and we're going to leave Air Woodland Park until another day, when we and Mrs H will return to take a look at another attraction from the days of Hay Country Park. Until then, from myself and from Mrs H, it is bye-bye for now.